Looking as far into the technological future as I dare, I'd like to describe the invention to end all inventions. I call it the replicator, and it's simply a duplicating machine. This is Sir Arthur Charles Clarke. Among many things, he co-wrote the screenplay for the 1968 film 2001 Space Odyssey. This conversation can serve no purpose anymore. In 1964, he made predictions for every innovation we see today. That he will have in his own house, not a computer as big as this, but at least a console to which he can talk to his friendly local computer and get all the information he needs for his everyday life. But Replicator is the most crazy of them all, and it sounds a little bit where we are heading with AI. I call it the Replicator and it's simply a duplicating machine. But it's a duplicating machine that can make an exact copy of anything. Now, we're already familiar with perfect copies of printing, of pictures, and of sounds. Yet, the camera and the tape recorder would have seemed miraculous to our ancestors. Our present world, in which literally millions of books exist, would again have seemed absolutely inconceivable. Can we imagine a world in which objects can be made as easily as today we can make books. This is the first time that the whole cellular heart with blood vessel is uh, printed. Confronted with such a device, our present society would probably sink into a kind of gluttonous barbarism because everybody would want unlimited quantities of everything since nothing would cost anything. In fact, cynics may doubt if any human society could survive an invention which would lead to unlimited abundance and the final ending of the curse of Adam. And yet, you know, human beings are almost infinitely adaptable. Look at the incredible changes we've experienced and survived from the Stone Age to the present time. It is our job to create computing technology such that nobody has to program. Jarvis, you up? And that the programming language is human. You see, I recently published a video where NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang said that kids shouldn't focus on learning how to code, but learn life engineering. If I were to do it over again right now, I would realize that the technology to turn life science to life engineering is upon us. Or as we will hear Sir Clarks call it, bioengineering. In that world of the future, we will not be the only intelligent creatures. One of the coming techniques will be what we might call bioengineering, the development of intelligent and useful servants among the other animals on this planet. But don't get me wrong, the way he presents this here uh, is definitely terrifying and gave me chills first time I was listening to this. You know, it's a scandal of which we should be thoroughly ashamed that prehistoric man tamed all the domestic animals we have today. We haven't added one in the last 5,000 years. Uh, of course, Eventually, our super chimpanzees would start forming trade unions and we get right back where we started. One consistent thing that I saw is everyone talks about next decade. When we talk about what kids should learn, first thing we need to agree what we call kids. I have a two-year-old, so for me, when it comes to future of her, I think about minimum of two decades, if not three or four. I'm curious about you, when you think of the future, what is the time span that you think about? One thing for sure that we collectively should agree on, all of us are onto the wild ride of a rapid change. And coding is not going to be spared to this. And if you already studied coding and you know how to work with computers and AI, congratulations, you have superpowers going into next decade. Coding might not be gone in the next three years, but how about in the next 50? I was still going to be sitting by the computer and coding. And the better question is, are we going to even use computers or with clunky keyboards? However, the most intelligent inhabitants of that future world won't be men or monkeys. They'll be machines, the remote descendants of today's computers. Now, the present day electronic brains are complete morons, but this will not be true in another generation. They will start to think and eventually they will completely outthink their makers. Is this depressing? I don't see why it should be. We superseded the Cro-Magnon and Neanderthal men, and we presume we're an improvement. I think we should regard it as a privilege to be stepping stones to higher things. I suspect that organic or biological evolution 
has about come to its end. And we are now at the beginning of inorganic or mechanical evolution, which will be thousands of times swifter. Meanwhile, scientists in the United States have created tiny biological robots from human tracheal cells. Now, these robots are known as anthrobots. Now, these microscopic multicellular bots have displayed a remarkable healing effect on other cells. They have been designed to self-assemble and can vary in size. But even if the future does belong to the robots, our bodies and our brains still have immense untapped potentialities. For example, to cope with the information explosion, we may develop a machine for recording information directly onto the brain, as today we can record a symphony on tape. Neuralink says the initial goal is to enable people to control a computer cursor or keyboard using their thoughts alone. So we may one day be able to become instant experts, uh, learning Chinese overnight, for example. What's the largest city in Bulgaria? And what is the population? Sofia, 1.1 million. That is correct. This is a device that you put on and it intercepts the electrical signals that your brain is sending to your vocal cords and sends that to a computer. And he gets the answer right in his ear through vibrations. You could be an expert in any subject. Mm -hmm. You have the entire internet in your head. That's the idea. Or we may be able to recall completely memories of past events so that we seem to relive them. The latest breakthrough shows how AI can generate images in our brains. Wow, so as long as I have seen it and you know the patterns of my brain, then the AI will read that out of my brain. Yes, 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 yes exactly. New research shows that the tech can help read people's private thoughts. Now, the new option raises all kinds of possibilities. One of the first is a medical priority, that this can enable people who are currently paralyzed or completely physically impaired to basically get a brand new lease on communicating. The researchers focused on picking up attempted speech of people who have lost the ability to speak or using these tools to help paralyze people in a sense right by thinking of writing. But basically all predictions boil down to this. Trying to predict the future is a discouraging and hazardous occupation because the prophet invariably falls between two stools. If his predictions sound at all reasonable, you can be quite sure that in 20 or at most 50 years, the progress of science and technology has made him seem ridiculously conservative. $500 fully subsidized with a plan? I said, that is the most expensive phone in the world and it doesn't appeal to business customers because it doesn't have a keyboard, which makes it not a very good email machine. On the other hand, if by some miracle, a prophet could describe the future exactly as it was going to take place, his predictions would sound so absurd, so far-fetched, that everybody would laugh him to scorn. This has proved to be true in the past, and it will undoubtedly be true, even more so, of the century to come. We will have the first time something that is smarter than the smartest human. There will come a point where no job is needed. You can have a job if you want to have a job for sort of personal satisfaction, but the AI will be able to do everything. So I don't know if that makes people comfortable or uncomfortable. It, it's, it's, <laughs> uh, we won't have universal basic income. We'll have universal high income. But there will be no shortage of goods and services. There will be an age of abundance. You might have heard this phrase thrown around by tech billionaires, and it goes like this. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Wanna guess who said it? That's right, it's Sir Clark. Just think about it. If we could predict how magician trick will work out or how it works, the whole point of magic would diminish. Yet Sir Clark managed to do exactly that so elegantly predict technologies of today and who knows maybe his predictions and the memory of his contributions will follow us in the decades to come this is a short clip from the last video that clark has made with an intention to say goodbye on his 90th birthday communication technologies are necessary but not sufficient for us humans to get along with each other this is why we still have many disputes and conflicts in the world. Technology tools help us to gather and disseminate information, but we also need qualities 
like tolerance and compassion to achieve greater understanding between peoples and nations. I have great faith in optimism as a guiding principle, if only because it offers us the opportunity of creating a self-fulfilling prophecy. I would like to see us overcome our tribal divisions and begin to think and act as if you're one family.